This is the Buck Scientific installation and training videotape for the 910 series gas chromatograph with the static heated headspace sampler. When you receive the system, be sure that you remove all of the packing material, bags with manuals and software, and the hardware used to install the system. Afterwards, we will install the Peak Simple on the suitable PC and connect that to the instrument for control of the various analytical parameters. This is the Buck Scientific Series 910 gas chromatograph configured with the heated static headspace sampler where your VOA vial containing your sample will go into the holder and then you will have pretty much an automated sample preparation when we're ready for that spot. On the left side of the GC you will see several fittings for gas inputs to allow you to use the FID detector and to use the helium gas for the carrier and the purge gas for the VOA vial. To make your gas tight connections use the 1 8 inch refrigerator coil copper tubing which is clean of any organics. Make sure you have no burrs on the end and place the 1 8 inch nut over the tubing first. We recommend the use of the two piece ferrule so take the flat piece with the slightly tapered end facing out and paste that on the tubing and lastly the cone shaped furrow with the narrow portion facing out goes on last. Insert the end of the copper tubing into the fitting on the GC and insert as far as possible then move the nut and the ferrule assembly forward finger tighten as tight as possible and then using a wrench tighten one half to three quarters of a turn to ensure a gas tight fitting where the ferrules will grab the tubing and give a tight seal. Repeat this procedure for the helium carrier gas which in this system is shown at the T and then at the other side of the tubing to your gas regulators. At this point we are now ready to plug in the GC after our gases are hooked up and go through the basic parameter setups. This particular GC configuration utilizes an internal air compressor for the FID support gas, but you will still need an external supply of helium for the carrier and the purge and hydrogen for the other FID support gas. These are the recommended delivery pressures from the regulator on the gas tank to ensure a consistent flow of gases into the GC which will affect the consistency of your chromatography. Make sure these are set before beginning any analyses. Put a column on too, you For routine operation a 20 amp 110 volt supply of electricity should be sufficient to allow the GC to be programmed to its maximum temperature. This represents the highest draw that the system will usually make on the electrical supply but occasionally 10 amp or 15 amp services will be sufficient. Depending upon the configuration that was ordered from Buck Scientific either a megabore capillary column or a 1 8 inch pack column will be installed in the system. Buck Scientific uses the metal capillary columns which allow them to be installed and shipped without fear of breakage or damage. If you need to change the column just make sure that the needle guide is not blocked by the column so that the carrier flow can enter either the small hole or slot cut in the forward side of it. Likewise for a 1 8 inch pack column make sure that there is a vent hole to allow the carrier gas to go through or when you seat it up against the septum you will not get any flow through the column. Check these if you ever have difficulties getting peaks off the system. Here's the inside components of the 910 Headspace GC. 
and we can see there's a side oven for the gas sampling valve which allows you to take a sample of your, your gas without fear of condensation by keeping the valve hot and warm. The large 8 inch column oven is where your analytical column will go and in this particular system we can see a clearly labeled fitting marked column in which will allow you to bring your gas sample from the headspace analyzer to the head of the column. To connect the column to this fitting, you will make sure that you have a clean end available on your steel column. And on that, you will place the 1 8 inch nut. And then the Megaboard Graphite Ferrule. Now due to the soft nature of the graphite, as you put it in the large flat end, there's a risk of having some graphite particles enter the end of the column. So using a sharp triangular file, make a moderately deep score mark on the end of the column, approximately one half to three quarters of an inch in, and then quickly snap it off to give a nice clean opening to go into the fitting. Take this clean in, position it so that the column is well seated at the bottom of that fitting, then push the nut and ferrule assembly forward while pushing on the end of the column to maintain a tight fit, then finger tighten the nut, and again using an appropriate wrench, tighten it approximately a half a turn to three quarters of a turn so that the column is securely gripped by the soft graphite ferrule. To check the tightness of the fit, if you grab the end of the column and give a gentle pull, it should not move. If so, push the column back in and retighten. Repeat this procedure with the other end of the column going directly to the FID fitting on the right side of the GC. When inserting the capillary column into the FID fitting, push it forward and looking into the vent hole of the GC, make sure that the column comes out approximately one millimeter or so. You do not want it sticking out too far or you will not get complete combustion of your hydrocarbon and pull back slightly and then slide the nut and ferrule assembly forward while holding the column steady finger tighten and then use a wrench to fully tighten the fitting be sure to replace the nut over the FID vent so that you can get proper ignition of the flame when we fire up the GC. Once all of the gas and electrical connections and plumbing connections are completed, we can now turn on the GC and check the various temperature and pressure zones to make sure they are within the parameters we need for our analysis. Most often these will be preset to the optimum conditions based on your column and your application, but they can be user adjusted very easily as you will see. As a safety feature, when the lid of the 910 GC is raised, there is no power delivered to any of the components on the top portion of the GC. So, Let's close the lid after we do our column installation and plug the system in to our 110 volt power. The power switch is located on the rear left corner of the GC and when we turn that on we can see a variety of LEDs light up and our red LED display to show us our various parameters. With the mode switch located beneath the display in the up position, we can use that to check our various parameters. 
and by pushing the lower button or the actual button we can see our settings for these various features. For example our carrier helium gas is set at 4 psi which is the equivalent of about 10 milliliters per minute as shown by the silk screening on the right side of the GC. This will be adjusted to get the optimum resolution in your actual analysis. The purge gas, which is used to flush out the vial, should be set at a minimum of 6 or 7 psi so that you get a good headspace formation of gas. The hydrogen is set typically at uh, 15 to 25 psi and the air somewhere between 5 and 10 psi. This will allow you to create a good flame in the FID to get the ionized carbon. The next switch is the FID flame ignition switch and when you lift this momentary switch up you may or may not hear a small popping sound as the air hydrogen flame ignites in the FID. The other LEDs are used for the temperature of the valve oven which is normally set at uh, the boiling point of whatever volatiles you're looking for in this case 60 degrees and the FID block detector heater again is set I believe at 150 degrees and after a few minutes with the lid closed should come up to temperature. To adjust these we can use the included small screwdriver, lift the lid and pressing the upper button or local set point button let us change our valve temperature to 105 degrees to minimize any water condensation. Next one over. So by pressing that we can see we have a set point of 60 and we could raise that by turning the screwdriver clockwise and raise that value up to whatever temperature we need. The next thing to check prior to beginning our analysis is to make sure that we have steam forming at the end of the FID vent tube. Holding a piece of metal or a cold piece of glass at the end of that little steel tubing, you should see a little steam build up as we see here quite vigorously. With all of our temperatures set. We can now toggle the FID gain switch for the detector to either low or high depending upon the sensitivity requirements. It is recommended to start with a gain of low initially since this will give you minimal noise and drift and raise it to high as needed. We can now close the lid and we are ready to plug in our PC using the 9-pin serial port and the interface cable provided on the left side of the GC. Be sure to tighten the fittings to make sure that you have a good tight electrical connection since this is important for data quality transmission. We are now take a look at the Peak Simple software and how to set up the parameters for the analysis. While Buck Scientific's technical department has preset most of the parameters for you to optimize the headspace analysis with the FID detector, please be aware that individual optimizations may be necessary to get the maximum results out of your GC. Again, using the display mode and pressing the upper row buttons, which are the set point buttons, you can adjust the vial holder temperature the valve temperature and the vial pressure to make sure you get maximum recovery of the headspace volatiles. Remember to always check your FID after ignition to make sure that there is steam present at the outlet vent and it is recommended to start with a gain of low initially and increase to high as needed to maximize sensitivity and response. With Headspace GC, cleaning of the FID is usually not an issue since most of the